So the way I thought about things after I graduated, I didn't take up a job at another company, and I thought, well, I have nothing right now, so anything I gain will be something. And if I fail, it's actually, I thought about, about it in a very calculated way. If I fail, then I also lose nothing because the risk is so small. I've just graduated and I have nothing. And um, I see my degree as kind of an insurance. A lot of people graduate from top schools, they'll see their degree as a mandate to go on and do something even better. But for me, I like to look at things in a different way. So to me, my degree is insurance. It should allow me to more freedom to do things that I wouldn't otherwise be able to do. Okay, so that's passion. I think the next step, once you have an idea of what you enjoy doing, is vision. It's seeing things that, seeing the next steps of what to do, and then the last step is actually doing those steps, it's action, so vision. Uh, I want to start out with the question, where do you get vision from? Like, a lot of people just have ideas of what they should do, how they should proceed through high school, what classes to do, what extracurriculars to do, and then a lot of people, they have no idea. And it's great to be in both camps. So for me, let's talk about reading. And this is something Will actually talked about. I read a lot, and I think reading is one of the best places to get ideas, to get a sense of vision. Actually, at my learning center, the way we teach reading is we teach it as a very active process rather than a passive process. And you have to engage with what you read and it has to generate ideas. You're not just a receptacle when you read, receiving ideas, other people write. When you read, you form your own ideas. And in another way, when you read, you stand on the shoulders of people who've written those things you read. And these people have much more experience and wisdom than you, and they put it all together in a very nice form of a book. I actually think a reading, whether it's a book or whether it's looking at movies or just observing all around you as a high school student, that's one of the best ways to put together a roadmap of what to do in high school. Um, Okay, let me skip to this part and I'll come back if we have time. But basically, when you're looking at things you can possibly do in high school, one thing I tell my students is actually look at what people aren't doing and pursue those things, especially if you're good at it. I think the engine of progress for yourself as a student, for individuals, or for groups of people is orthogonal. It's not in the same direction, it's in a different direction to where things seem to be going. And that's kind of a similar idea that Willie uh, suggested. But look at what people aren't doing, because you're not going to get noticed if you do the same thing everyone else does. So, I mean, I think that's part of the reason I came back to Georgia, to take my own path. I think when you think in terms of, when you look just at what other people do, it's dangerous because of this reason. Individual, you'll, you'll measure yourself wrongly, and it leads to a hurting effect when people flock together, and people think, as a group, you, you might think that collectively you guys are going to success, but I think that path subverts real success or fulfillment. I think being aware, being keen, and this is one of the things I did really well in high school. I did things that no one else did. And I wasn't good at a lot of things that were very popular, but that made me stand out. So for example, um, I started a computer science club. I decided that, at first I experimented with math and I decided it wasn't something that I liked to do outside the classroom. I wasn't extremely good at it in terms of competition, so I started my own club and I did computer science, which I liked more. So I actually think the pulse of competition in and of itself is kind of an obstacle to real emergence. I think a better way of thinking about things is think about differentiating yourself, not, not in terms of competition, but in terms of escaping competition. 
escape competition. And I think that's the best way you can make a name for yourself in high school. Too many quotes. The last part is action. So you have an idea of what you like, you have a vision of how to pursue that. I think the last step is action, making sure that you can, um, making sure that you do it. Because I think ideas, after all, they're worthless unless someone does something about them. Um, I think there are different ways to do your ideas. Uh, I remember in college, I had the great chance of meeting Mark Zuckerberg and Tony Shea. And Mark, as you guys know, also, he started Facebook, Tony started Zappos. And I, coming into college, I always thought to be a leader, you had to be really composed, you had to be polished, you had to be suave, and you had to be really articulate. But uh, Mark and Tony, they were very, very shy and awkward people, meeting them. Um, they struggled with speaking, and it was just a small group of students. They, had, they struggled with speaking. So it's hard, at that time it was hard for me to think, Mark Zuckerberg, this guy who um, started a company like Facebook, he had a hard time speaking in just a room full of students. So I think there are all types of leadership styles, and you obviously have leaders who are really charismatic, and are great um, with people, and they work great on teams. So I think there are so many different ways to lead. Um, in high school, it's great to join student council, or student government, or National Honor Society. But actually, when I was in school, a lot of my friends did, but when I was in school, uh, I wasn't that interested in politics. So uh, a lot of my friends joined student council, and they became officers. But I, I never really thought about it, and I did things like I managed the track and field team. And that was good because I'm more of a solitary person, so I could work with things um, on my own. I also started a summer program in the community, and that involved getting a group of people together, and we taught middle schoolers. But ultimately, I mean, there are all different kinds of ways to lead. I think the most important principle, that's the foundation of action, is alignment. You have to align your passion, your vision, and action. Everything has to be continuous. You can't say one thing and do the other to yourself or to other people. Someone I look up to a lot is a professor at Harvard Business School. He's, he's probably the most famous professor at Harvard Business School right now. His name is Clayton Christensen. And I recommend this book to all of you guys. It's one of the best I've read. It's his book, How Do You Measure Your Life? So he applies business cases to uh, kind of the philosophy of living life. And he, he tells an example of when he, he was a Rhodes Scholar who went to Oxford, and he later, after that, he went to Harvard to get his PhD. He's really tall, he's seven, six feet seven, and he, he was a great basketball player when he was in school. So he was at Oxford, he was on the basketball team, and it was their version of the Final Ten, or the Big Ten. Basically this big collegiate basketball competition. And Clayton is really religious, so he has a policy for himself. On Sundays, he doesn't do any work. And they had a competition, it was the quarterfinals, they had a competition, um, basketball competition, and it was on a Sunday. So he talks about this in his book. He had a critical decision to make. Was he going to play for the team? And if he did play for the team, they, would, they might have a chance of winning, at least a much better chance of winning. And like, there's no reason he shouldn't. But he has this principle to himself. It's not a hard principle, it's a soft principle. He could just make this an exception and play for the team. It's not that big of a deal. But he says in his book that ultimately he decided not to play that Sunday. He told his co coach, and his other teammates that it was just his policy. Sunday was reserved as a day for God. Their team ended up winning, and he, um, he came from that learning important lesson. Life is a stream of extenuating circumstances. So when you start making exceptions, then you continue to do them. The best way to act is to align your thoughts and your actions. And um, so that's something that I try to live by.
Okay. Lastly, how it's if you're if you're in high school and you have these ideas, maybe you want to put together something in the community. Maybe you want to start your own club, or maybe you want to you have a cause that you want to fundraise for. How do you on the journey? You're going to face a lot of obstacles. Okay. How do you deal with the obstacles? I think when you do anything yourself, because that's what leadership is. It's it's you're being the agent, you're being the cause, and you're uh, creating consequences for yourself and for others. But you're the initiator. You're gonna run into a lot of obstacles that are gonna set you back. So when you encounter those, you just keep on going. And I want to show you guys a quote. Never mind. Uh, anyways, have you guys seen Interstellar? Okay, this is the second thing I recommend you guys check out. It's out in theaters right now. It actually, when I watched it earlier this week, it became my favorite movie of all time because the entire movie is about leadership and entrepreneurship and passion. Basically, this guy has to save Earth and he has to go on a spaceship, uh, like far into space, into the unknown. And he's propelled on, uh, into that journey because he has a love for his family back at home and he's very passionate about flying. So that propels him to go into uncharted territories, um, to face aliens and to battle it out with uh, enemies. Um, so for me, I took a lot of, from that. I think passion sustains us to brave us into the unknown, um, even across space and time. And when you live for something, then um, you have a vision for what it should be, how it should be better than it is today, and you're willing to do everything it takes to get there. So I, I think, all summed up into one, I think that's what leadership means to me. And lastly, I think in a lot of us, we aren't born leaders. I certainly was, born, was not born a leader. Um, other people are much better in group settings where they're, they have a, they don't, uh, to them, talking in front of people is nothing. But for me, at least, these things have always been my own personal obstacles. So I, I have actually two points I want to make about how to actually become a, a better person. Someone who you aren't right now, but someone who you want to become. And these are two points that I emphasize again and again in our classes when we teach students how to read and write better. First is to be mindful daily. Think about your goals on a daily basis and ask yourself, what did you do that day to get yourself further, to push yourself beyond your comfort zone, expand yourself just a little bit? And that's what, the same thing we ask our students. I had a friend in college. Uh, he was my year, Harvard 2013. He studied economics like me. Except the difference was, he came from a very impoverished area in Texas, in Houston, Texas. And his journey was a very inspiring journey for me. He was a close friend of mine. Uh, he's, he's black, he went to a very bad school. And the first time I met him, I remember this guy, he couldn't speak correctly. Uh, and this was freshman year of college. But in his room every day, he, he posted up, he would post up signs, um, he would make goals for himself, and he would put them up in his room. So the first time I went in there, I saw these uh, things he put up in his room. Get all A's this semester. Wake up before 9 a.m. Um, get the internship uh, in finance this summer. These were goals that he looked at every single day when he was working on his desk or when he got up or before he went to bed. And he was a freshman. When, he, um, when I graduated that year in Harvard 2013, he actually gave, he, he gave, uh, he was one of the people who gave a speech for the graduating class. And he, he gave a wonderful speech. He took out this shirt, so he was on stage. He took out this plain white t-shirt. And back when he was younger in high school, he was actually shot by one of his friends. And um, he, in the shirt, it was a bloodstained shirt that he got out. Um, and it was just, um, he was a very inspiring guy. He's an example of someone who is mindful of their goals every single day. The second point is to internalize knowledge. A lot of times in our classes, students learn things, but they don't know how to apply them. 
It's one thing to read about how to write better and plot and um, to understand techniques you can use in your writing. It's another thing to apply those techniques and master them. So internalize things. Don't be satisfied with just reading about things, but try to apply them into your own life. If there's something admirable about someone that you see, then try to see how you can, you can pick up that characteristic of them. Maybe they're um, polished in a way or well-spoken in a way. Um, be, be observant of everything around you. So in summary, passion, vision, and action, those are my three points, and be mindful on a daily basis and internalize observations and thoughts around you so that you can apply them in your own life. Thank you.